Well, thanks everybody for coming. This is a, this is a, a real t honor and, and pleasure for me to be able to come do this and a different kind of talk than I usually give. Uh, so I spent some time putting this series together. Uh, and the first part is what is roughness, then, uh, then we talk about measurement, and then calculations. All right, so I'm Chris Brown and, uh, from uh, WPI. And I'm going to start off with a, a couple little ads for, uh, for WPI. Um, and, and in particular, uh, in uh, just a month, we're going to have our second seminar on surface metrology for the Americas. It's uh, actually continuing a series that we started on uh, International Conference on Surface Metrology. And the emphasis is going to be on education. We'll have two days of uh, tutorials um, and, uh, and a day of a workshop and, uh, or and a day of standards meetings. And there'll be triple sessions of tutorials. We have stuff that will be uh, our material for all levels of users, from uh, people just starting with surface metrology to advanced. Uh, and, and WPI is home to um, one of the three labs of its kind in the United States Academic Labs that is uh, dedicated to fundamental work on, and standards on uh, surface metrology. So we're looking for people to partner with, um, and we're very happy to, to have Olympus as, as one of our partners. So in, in this talk, I want to uh, discuss the advantages and importance of understanding roughness and, uh, and have some look at uh, current and future perspectives. So surfaces cover everything. Roughness is important. And manufacturing is often about getting the surface you want with the properties you want, roughness being one of those important properties. Um, uh, and, and so that's what we're doing in manufacturing. One of the questions, though, that uh, is worth looking at is what is roughness and who decides? So when a product is designed, the designer can specify the roughness of the part. Then it goes to manufacturing, they have to try to manufacture that. And then when it goes to quality assurance, somebody's got to measure it and, and verify it. So why is there roughness? Why don't we just make everything smooth? Well, part of it is cost limitation. The, to drive the sort of smooth surfaces down to, uh, to lower levels costs more money. But uh, lots of times we don't know what we want in a surface either. Uh, and, and it's always had the roughness, and, and so we're not sure what's going to happen if we eliminate that. So how can roughness be valuable? Well, it helps with things like adhesion, friction, lubrication, aesthetics, cleanability, seals. It's important. Here's a list that I've been putting together, and it's by no means comprehensive, of all the things that can be influenced by roughness. Uh, and some of these we've done some research on. Uh, some we're, we'd be delighted to have partners uh, to research uh, these things with. And, uh, if you've got some, some additions to the list, I'd, uh, I'd love to hear about them. I'm sure there's more. Design is uh, primarily done with form, and it's usually done with smooth, so what we call Euclidean shapes, because if we magnify them enough, we find they're spheres or cylinders or um, you know, flat surfaces. The surface texture or the surface roughness also needs to be designed. And uh, one of the groups that I work with, ASME, has got designations for how design engineers are supposed to indicate roughness on surfaces. The, uh, the most used kind of roughness, over 90% of industry, runs on RA, the average roughness. And we'll be looking at that uh, more uh, in the next few slides. One of the things to keep in mind, though, is this uh, cutoff uh, or sampling lengths. And that uh, specifies the scale at which the roughness will be evaluated. And that's an important concept. And that will be a theme in this talk as well as the next two. So here's the average roughness. And, uh, and if nobody says anything and they just tell you the roughness is a tenth of a thousandth or something, they're talking about average roughness uh, in, uh, in micro inches, of course. Now, the form is the larger scale, and those are the spheres and things that we looked at a moment, uh, a moment ago. The finest scale is the roughness, and the waviness is, is what's in between. The other thing that we talk about in ASME B46 is the, uh, is the lay, and the lay is the directionality. Uh, 
the surface or the anisotropy and how that's oriented. So this is a machine surface. We can clearly see there's the, the direction the tool passed and there's a certain lay to the surface. And that can be important for many things. So in surface metrology, as I said, we talk about sort of three parts to the surface. The largest one is the form. So that might be cylindric as uh, in this part that we're looking at. Finest is the roughness and intermediate is the waviness and, and that's the way it can get broken down. Now, for the designer, they would like to know the relationship between the performance and the roughness. And so there might be some sort of curve that looks like this, and some sort of equation you could work with where the performance is some function of the roughness. Now, there's lots of different forms that this relationship might take. So here, it looks like the rougher, the better in terms of the performance. Quite often, it's the other way around. We think the smoother, the better um, for the performance. And then, uh, but oftentimes it's much more complicated. And, and we get start thinking about the smoother the better for the roughness. And, uh, and, and then there's some tricky things like friction, where if it gets too smooth, um, it's, uh, it's not going to be as good. So smoother is not always better. And this is why we see, uh, we're seeing uh, double-sided tolerances on roughness. So here's an example of a rough surface, and this has been finished by lapping. And one of the interesting things you can see on this is it looks like we can see individual grains on this surface. Um, and this is um, a surface that has been measured with a, uh, an Olympus uh, confocal microscope, and it's a valve seat. And so one of the questions you have is, well, how is this going to work for, uh, for sealing? And, uh, and what other kinds of properties or what other kinds of uh, finishing might we use on this? So almost any kind of manufacturing you do is going to, uh, is going to influence the, uh, the roughness. And so trying to understand these relationships and how they'll impact the surface uh, as well as how the surface impacts the performance is an important part of being able to design these things. Now, quite often, when we take a look at some manufacturing process variable, like feed or grit size or something, there's a relationship between that and the resulting roughness. And often it takes a form that looks something like this, or might see how that's generated. Now, the, the, uh, the stuff that we see in all the textbooks, and that's the peak to valley roughness, is a function of the feed and the tool nose radius. Um, so that can give us a, a kind of first indication about the roughnesses. And now the question is sort of what is the limit of the domain of applicability on that. So the development of this is actually pretty simple. It's an approximation. But we're really dealing still with Euclidean kinds of things and not with something that we'd always intuitively call roughness because that looks like a very predictable shape. And in fact, the, the tool nose might actually be useful. And here's an example of this um, with a, a, a four millimeter radius tool. And I forgot what the feed is on this. This is what we looked at before, and you can see the, the, the feed marks, but inside the feed mark, it, it isn't perfectly smooth, and there's all kinds of things that are influencing it. Here's a, a part that was polished, and then put in a tumbler made by Bel Air, um, and, uh, and we can see the progression with time in that tumbler. So these tumblers are intended to remove burrs and, and put on a, 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 a non-directional or a, isotropic kind of surface finish. And uh, here's another example example of this. One of the things, too, that when you put uh, a part in a mass finisher like this is uh, you can take corners off, and, and that's often what the intention is. So here's uh, uh, an example of what we did. This is also measured with, uh, with an Olympus uh, confocal microscope. And, and one, of the, one of the great things about this and the neat thing that we're seeing now in, uh, in surface metrology is that we can uh, image these edges and, and trace the evolution of an edge through a manufacturing process like this. And so that, uh, that's often very revealing. When you think you've got a really nice edge, you can put it under there and you can see how much room there is for improvement. Let's go back for a moment to a turned surface. And, and, uh, and I'll be in the measurement talk. Uh, 
at, uh, at 1 o'clock. I'll be talking a, uh, a little bit more about comparing profiling and, uh, and 3D measurements. But uh, if we just take a look at a profile, and these are the most common things that are done today, um, you say there's the essentially the, the measured leveled profile. Now we can extract the waviness, and that leaves the roughness. So uh, th there are some other height parameters. We talked about RA. Um, we can also, we talked about RT, which is peak to valley. And that can be broken up so we can see the valleys and the peaks. And that is some usefulness I'll, I'll talk about in the third talk. For right now, I want to get back to this idea of scale. And I mentioned this cutoff. And so it's the designer's job to uh, put the, uh, the cutoff uh, that you're going to use for specifying the roughness on the print. And here's something interesting that uh, uh, I think a lot of people aren't aware of. Here's the same profile the one uh, that uh, with two different cutoffs. One where the cutoff is uh, 250 micrometers, another where it's 800. And you can see how dramatically that changes the roughness value. Same measurement, different filtering, and the RA changes by 41%. So jokingly, I'll tell the, uh, the engineers I'm working with, if you're having trouble meeting a spec and it's time to go home, change the, uh, change the cutoff if nobody's told you which one to use. And, uh, uh, and, and then maybe you can meet the spec. But that's something to watch out for. And often, uh, as I said, this is not specified. So let's say, how far can we take this? And how far can we go with, uh, say, just chip machining by chip removal and, uh, and turning? So this is a part that was diamond turned in uh, near Keene, New Hampshire at um, uh, Nanotech Systems. And so they faced it first, and then they put on a series of grooves as a kind of demonstration project. One of the interesting things, actually, you can see on this is different colors. And these colors are not from pigments, but these are from, uh, from light interacting with a very precisely made surface. And actually, you can see some more of that green there and blue and those things. Let's see what those little marks look like. So here's a measurement, a uh, preliminary measurement we made right in the center of that um, with the uh, Olympus Lex. And these ridges are 500 nanometers apart, which is pretty interesting when you think about it because the laser is only 409 nanometers and we're easily imaging ridges that are 500 apart. So here's a, a 3D perspective on that, also from the, uh, from the Lex. And, uh, and this is, um, and I'll talk about this more under measurement, but this is with the 100x lens uh, with, the, uh, with the zoom at eight times. And as I said, these are 500 nanometers apart, these ridges. So, um, and these are machined in. And these are machined in with a diamond tool. So it shows how far, one, we can go with, with manufacturing to, uh, to, to produce uh, surfaces, and, uh, and two, how well we can inspect them. Now, one of the interesting things about manufacturing surfaces is lots of times the very best surfaces we, we try to get are made with abrasive processes. So I thought it'd be worth it to take a look at, at some abrasives. Um, and, and so one of, the, one of the interesting things is the abrasives themselves are, are chaotic um, at fine scales, or in scales we can sense. It depends on what, what size they are. And, and this is a very interesting measurement. Now, that's a true color off the, uh, uh, off the Lex, and it's measured with the Lex. Now, this measurement itself is a 10 by 10 stitch so that we can show uh, a, a significant part of the abrasive with several particles on there. Uh, and so each of these 10 by 10s is uh, 124 by 124, so over a million elevations, 100 times, uh, to, to make that image. And, uh, and there it is in, in true color. And you can see some of the light interacting, because this is an unused abrasive, with, uh, with some of the abrasive particles in an interesting way there. And I wanted to credit the, the students uh, who've done that. And I should mention, we're able to train uh, graduate and undergraduate students to be making useful measurements in, in less than half an hour uh, on, on the Lext. All right, so to, uh, to kind of wrap things up here, 
So surface metrology, this is measurement and analysis of, uh, of surfaces to better understand how to manufacture them and how they're going to behave. So one of the things that uh, makes this uh, particularly interesting is that we're trying to take a look at these surfaces and figure out how we can tell good surfaces from bad. And really interesting is that if we go to sufficiently fine scales, the surfaces are chaotic. In other words, they're a jumble of things, and they're not easily um, described by Euclidean geometry. And that's the thing that we're most used to talking about geometrically. So one of the things that our lab has been doing has been uh, uh, trying to find better ways to, uh, to characterize these uh, chaotic uh, geometries. So what are we seeing in manufacturing surfaces? Well, as I showed you, the trend is towards greater control in the surface formation and try to push the form in Euclidean shapes to finer scales, like we saw those 500 nanometer grooves. And what this is, uh, or the other thing we're seeing is greater sophistication in the um, measuring uh, and analyzing these surfaces. And uh, so what are the needs here? Well, we need a better understanding of the processes and the tool workpiece interactions uh, and the performance. And this can come from this uh, greater sophistication. So I want to acknowledge uh, some of the uh, people that have been helping the lab, especially Olympus, uh, DigitalSurf, who makes software for doing analysis that we use, um, and uh, some of the companies that have been uh, supporting some work in the lab, like Safina for uh, super finishing, Mezzo that make valves, and, uh, and, and I'll talk in the third of this series a little bit about some of the software that we've developed. So I want to thank you for your attention, and I'd like to point out that um, if you're interested in a possible graduate certificate program in surface metrology or abrasive processes, um, uh, let me know about this because we're thinking of putting some of that together at WPI. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I think I think we're is the level right? Level's good. All right, are we ready to go? Yeah. All right.